We're so grateful that you've chosen to join us again for our third week in our small group Bible studies and our campaign. We really do need each other. We hope that you're getting full benefit out of this campaign. I'm hoping that you're participating daily in the devotionals, dedicating 20 minutes to Bible study and prayer. I'm hoping you're also taking the opportunity to stream our sermons online or to come to worship at our church so that you might benefit from an additional lesson that emphasizes the theme for the week. And now, I'm so glad that you're here in our, you're this small group, wherever home you might be in. And we pray that God will bless you. And so we begin today with a statement of faith. God is light. That is awesome. But have you ever stopped to think what that means? I'm grateful for the light. I love the light. The light is just a beautiful thing. It helps you see where you're going. That was, of course, dawned upon me. We have a horse, a little quarter horse that we have stabled in a barn that's really dark at night. Sometimes we don't get to a stall to take care of him until late. Sometimes 9 or 10 o'clock at night we'll get out there and we'll give him a good grooming and a good brush through. But the problem is the light switches are way on the other side of the barn. And you never know what is going to be an obstacle in your way that night because the obstacles change. Sometimes it's an engine. Sometimes it's a toolbox. Sometimes there's a pile of straw or, or hay that's in your way or a pile of sawdust that's in your way. Uh, you just never know what you're going to stumble on at nighttime. And so I will never forget one night I was stumbling along and doing that walk and trying to find where I was going and so forth, hoping I didn't find any, stumble in anything. After all, my body had been filled with so many bumps and bruises and stubbed toes and, and bruises on the, uh, on the knees and the ankles and from running into all of these things. So I'm doing my dark night shuffle, trying to figure a way to get to that light without getting injured or hurt, when all of a sudden my wife is behind me that day. She looks, she kind of, uh, she's probably shaking her head. Of course it's dark, I don't know. But she says, you do know that you have a flashlight on your cell phone. Oh, how do you answer that question when your wife says something to you like that? Do, do you answer, yes, I do? Or do you answer, no, I don't? You know, it's better in those cases, men, just to say, oh, uh, okay, <laughs> which is basically probably what I did. It's better to say okay and just turn your light on and admit to nothing. That's all you have to do. So that's what I did. Oh, the light. Then I could prevent myself from getting injured again. Well, that's what God does for us. God is the light. And so I want to read to you from the book of 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. This is the message John says to us that we have heard from Jesus and now declare to you, God is light and there is no darkness at all in him. How amazing is that? That sounds like such a fantastic thing. But I'm going to talk about a few things today that might scare you, but they should not. What is the implication of God being light? It means that nothing can hide in the presence of God. There's no wrinkles or faults or warts or sins that can in any way be hidden from God. God sees them all. That can be terrifying. We try to hide so much of ourselves from the others and from the world. We, we wear clothes to cover up our imperfections and makeup to cover up all those physical things that we don't want people to see, the, the, uh, the, the warts and the imperfections in our skin. We try to hoard, hide in the same way all of our moral failures, doing a very similar type of thing. We try to keep them in the dark so people don't see them. We all have moral failures. We don't want people to know what they are. But God turns on the light and all of a sudden, there they are, out in the open for everyone to see. That's the implication of God being light. That can be terrifying. Everybody's going to see me the way I am. God's going to see me the way I truly am. But it's not supposed to be terrifying. God shines a light on us so that we can improve, not to indict us, not to judge us, not to send us to hell. Do you get that? God shines his light on us so that we can improve our walk with him and with each other. I remember being in the choir. I was always in the choir in elementary school and middle school and high school, and I loved doing that. And, but I remember we would get a piece of music, and, 
and we would not be familiar with the music or we wouldn't be familiar with the part or maybe we hadn't learned the part that we were supposed to sing yet. And so what you would try to do is you try to hide a little bit behind the music sheet or you try to lower your voice because you didn't want to make a mistake that everybody's going to laugh at. But I remember our music teacher, Mrs. Isaias, would always uh, clap her hands and say, you guys need to sing louder because I can't tell whether you're making mistakes or not. How can I correct you if I can't hear you? She wasn't upset when we made mistakes. That happens. It's life. It's music. She was only upset when we tried to hide our mistakes because that's what would prevent us from improving. See, that's what God wants to do by shining his light on you. God doesn't want to embarrass you. God doesn't want to expose you to ridicule. It might expose everything in our lives, but it's exposing everything in our lives by God's light so that we might improve and correct our direction. God isn't angry with us. You've got to get over this idea that God is upset about all the moral fairies in your life and, oh my goodness, God is ready to push you down a slippery slide to hell. That is not God. That's not what the Bible says about you. God isn't worried about your faults and mistakes. He knows that you have them. He loves you anyway. God wants to shine a light on your faults, warts, and mistakes so that you can improve. That's why. So hiding yourself out of shame prevents you from a deeper relationship with God and with other people. Now, have you ever done that in the real church? Have you ever tried to hide yourself from your brothers and sisters in Christ? I, I know we do. I do too. We all do. Because there is always some fear there. There's a fear of condemnation. And I hate to say churches can be filled with condemnation for, and ridicule for people who do not live up to their standards, nose in the air type of standards. That happens in our communities of Christ. And if that's true, if you're in a church that you're afraid to share what's going on in your life because you're going to be ridiculed or marginalized, we need a new church. I'm not saying go to another congregation, but we need a new church. Our churches need to be transformed. The hearts of our churches need to be transformed. The place of the church should be a place where we can come, where all of our heart, our words and faults can be exposed because all of us have them and nobody's any better than anybody else. It should be the non-judgment zone when we get to the churches because when I'm judgmental of you and I'm looking at all your faults and words, I'm saying, oh, I can't believe you act in this way. Basically what I'm doing is I'm ignoring all the, short, the shortcomings in my life. And I'm not taking them seriously. And I'm acting as though my stuff doesn't stink, but yours does. It may not stink to me, but I'm sure that all the stuff in my life stinks to everybody else. And it's hanging out there for everybody to see. What light does to the situation, when God shines his light, nothing can hide anymore in, the, in darkness. But that is critical if we are going to grow in our relationship with God and with each other. Everything needs to be brought out to the light. Because here's what God really wants to happen. God wants to shine his light on us so, and help us to let go of all those guilts and all of those burdens from the past life. If you're carrying guilt and burdens from things you've done in your life, God wants all those things you've done in your life out in the open so they can be highlighted so you can get rid of them, not to embarrass you. God wants you to find support in other people who understand your struggle so they can also help you overcome these challenges in your life. God is not out to get you, and we in turn as Christians should not be out to get each other, but to help each other get better. The purpose of Jesus being the light of our life is so that Jesus might be one with us now as we are. Not at some future date when we get our lives together. God knows the faults of our lives. That's why God shines the light on us. But God embraces us anyway. We're like porcupines. we got needles sticking out everywhere, but God just comes and hugs us anyway. Isn't that amazing how much God loves us? And then God says, okay, I'm going to help you. I love you anyway. I also want to help you get better. God wants us to support each other so that we can help each other improve. Here's the thing that God really wants to do. Shine a light on you. 
shine a light on you so that your life can improve. So all the faults and warts are there for everybody to see. So you can confess those things. You can get rid of all those burdens, all of those guilt that you carry. So you can improve in your life. Because what, here's what God really wants to do for you. Remember how, how I told you about Mrs. Isaiah? I want you to think of your life as a symphony. And you know you're not always going to play the right notes. And some of the melodies you play are going to really stink. But you play a big, you play a, play a bold, you play a, play a broad and loud. So God can hear it. And God can say, okay, let's improve that part of it. Awesome. Now that part is beautiful. Okay, let's work on this next part. See, what God does is God wants to make a beautiful symphony out of your life. And you can't do it as long as you're hiding in the darkness. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless our small groups today as they learn about living their lives broadly, bigly, loudly, so that they can become a beautiful symphony. They're not a beautiful symphony right now. I'm not. Mine kind of is clunky and it stinks sometimes. It really is pitiful to the ears and sometimes people don't want to always hear it. But man, the symphony is a work in progress. I still got years in front of me that you're going to continue to work on the symphony of my life. But the only way my symphony is going to improve and get beautiful is if I play loudly for people to hear it, make mistakes so I can be corrected, and live my life in the good news and the grace of God. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Enjoy your conversation today. May God bless you. I also would highlight we've got coming up several events in which you can participate as a small group. On March 20th, Sunday, we will have a small group event, a mission festival, where all of our small groups will be gathering together for Sunday worship and talking about what they've learned and also the hopes and dreams that they have. Maybe you can accomplish something as a small group. I'm asking you to discuss that today. How can you create some type of thing that you would like to do that can really make a difference in somebody's lives? And I'm hoping that you will bring that campaign or that project that your small group would like to do to our church on March the 20th and share it with our other small groups so that we can be inspired. God bless your conversation today. Amen.